In this video, I'm going to build some stuff from Ninjago Season 13 Master of the Mountain because I didn't buy any of these sets when they came out because they were so expensive. And if I were to buy any today, well, they'd be even more expensive. So I'm going to try to build stuff from this season myself. Minifigures, weapons, and at the end, I'm even going to be building my own version of a set. Let's go. The Skull Saucer is the main villain of this season and man, he is a great villain. He can fly, he's really strong, and he's just really menacing overall from the looks of him. I want to build him. So let's start from bottom to top, shall we? First his ropes. I think I'll need a brick for this. I'll take it from this tournament set I built for a video a while back, and it looks a lot like a rope. Okay, now we need to get a black torso that has a rope vibe to it. Maybe we could use Cole's Legacy Ninja Torso, but it looks too complex. I want to get something simpler, given that the robes are just plain black. So I'll use the torso of this foot soldier from Ninja Turtles. Looking pretty good. His wings are simple. I have the exact same pieces from this Ash Attacker from Nexonite. Funny, I'm using Nexonite pieces again for a Ninja build. Alright, so we've got the body, the legs, and the wings done, so now we just need the headpiece. This is gonna be hard. See, the Skull Saucer wears a mask of sauce over his face, and I don't think this Lego piece exists outside of the sets. I did try a brick build one, but it is way too big. I also thought about using paper, but it didn't seem realistic, and I want to make this pure Lego, so I settled on using this Skull Saucer. It matches the original pretty well. The eyes are just black, and the mouth also looks similar. And finally, we just need the hat. I don't have a black one, so I'll just use this Red Stone Army one. Our Scar Sorcerer figure is almost done, we just need two more things. First, his weapon. He has a spear and I'll use the Forbidden Spinjitzu spear for that. One scene I really like is the final battle when the Scar Sorcerer actually jams the bottom end of his spear into the ground, so I'm going to take this little silver fang and attach it with two studs with holes stacked on top of each other. The last thing we need to add to the Scar Sorcerer is the skull of Hazardur. How about this green cylinder? Too thin. Too thick. Too just right. I got this minifigure head from Ultra Agents. And that's it, our Skull Sorcerer is complete. However, he's so menacing now, he's starting to scare the other minifigures in my room. So let's build some ninja. Of course, we have to build Cole, he's the focus ninja. Now, for the Shintaro set wave, they made a special gold armor piece that I don't have. But the closest thing I have is this golden Chima armor. So let's just take that and put it on Legacy Cole because I don't have any other Cole figures with gold printing on it. And also, the head wrap doesn't fit, so let's just give him some hair. Now I'm going to try to build the Blades of Deliverance, the collectibles of this set wave, which Cole uses to defeat the Skull Sorcerer. I have this design with a lightsaber handle and some bricks. Here's one version which is super long, so I'm going to use this shorter version, so it can fit on Cole nicely. I can clip this on Cole's arm, which looks really nice. Now we just add some more bricks so we can fit a throwing star that Cole uses in the final battle, and a shield. Alright, Vangelis finally has a ninja to rival him, and I think my minifigures are safe. But just to be sure, let's make some more ninja. Now I only have one golden Chima armor which means I can only make Kai, Cole or Zane. I'm gonna try Kai. If I put the Chima armor on Kai FS, then it looks pretty similar to the original figure. But I'd rather have Cole so I could buy Kai. However, what I do have a lot of is Silver ZX armor. And Stone Armor J here looks pretty similar to Hero J, so I'll use this and give him Titanium Zane's head wrap. Okay, I have to admit that I don't have the redesigned J face. So instead of using the old one, I just have to use another head I have that has freckles. Looks like this kid has freckles. Oh well, it works because Jay is technically a child in the wild brain era, isn't he? Anyway, good thing is I have enough pieces to make Jay's chain mace thing. And finally, our minifigures are done. That was intense and I'm very, very happy with how they turned out. Now it's time to build a set for these figures. The set wave was very interesting because most sets actually had a game experience. It was essentially a role-playing board game. These tiles were the spaces on the board. You could spin a spinner and it would give you a number from 1 to 3 then you would move that number of spaces on the board. The aim was to get the Blade of Deliverance and defeat all the villains. Different characters had different abilities and it looks like a really interesting concept so I want to carry this over in my custom set. Most of the sets were meant to be stone masses in lava puddles, so they mostly have orange plates at the bottom to represent lava. I don't have a lot of these though, this is literally all I have, so instead I'm going to use some orange paper. Also for the game tiles, it's a fairly recent piece, so I only have two of them. To make more, I'll get this 1x2 tile and 1x2 plate, and I think I'm all set to get the win. After around 2 hours of building, this is what I got. It's been a while since I made a mock and there was a lot of experimenting, so I couldn't really film a linear building process. You can see the starting point here where Jay and Cole can begin. For this angle, I used the building technique with this L-shaped plate. These stone platforms here can actually be adjusted to flow in any direction, so you can change up the board if you want. Then you can slowly move up and make your way to the Skull Saucer. 
Up here we have the blade of deliverance in a rectangular stone of sorts. I used jumper plates to put this 2x3 element in the center of the build. Moving down we have a resting place with the skull of Hazardur. I used an illegal building technique here where you insert these grill pieces into the bottom of this 2x2 tile to make it slightly thicker than using a normal 1x1 brick. Some rock detailing on the roof and pillars and if we go around to the front here is a snot technique, meaning studs not on top to make some more detailed rock designs. And of course we have a transition to the lava. I'm really proud of this but there are a few more things I want to add. First let's add some torches so it's not so dark. I have these brown telescope pieces and fire elements. Also I want to make a gong. Sound the gong! We also need a jail cell. I have these brown elements from the titanium dragon and they work well. And finally, just some more touch up to the floor with these grey elements to make it look less monotonous. Prime Empire is the 12th season of Ninjago which came out in 2020 and the minifigures were great. They looked absolutely amazing, something I would have loved to see in the original season 3 and it really felt like the huge untapped potential of Ninjago rebooted and because these sets aren't around anymore, I'm gonna build them myself with the only part I already have. Let's see what cool stuff I can build. Will this be a success or the biggest disaster on my channel yet? Yeah. Let the challenge begin. So this all started when Prime Empire came out back in 2020 and with nothing better to do I was looking through my LEGO collection and I found this piece right here that looked a lot like this Prime Empire loot box. So I kid you not, I made this improvised Kitana loot box back in 2020 using this round brick and neon laser from a Ninja Turtle set. I was pretty happy with this and after starting my YouTube career just 2 months ago, I have decided to give Prime Empire another shot. So to begin, let's make some minifigures. The first guy I want to make is Scott, an absolute menace. He's the first guy to get stuck in the Prime Empire video game and he just looks really cool. So first I'm going to get this generic figure here and take his torso because it's a half open jacket. Next I'm going to steal some black legs from this policeman so that he can't arrest me if I commit any illegal building techniques later. Now Scott's head is interesting, when the set leaks first came out, lots of people actually thought that Scott was Lloyd because Scott's smiley face looks a lot like Lloyd's. Great Scott! So I think I'll try Lloyd's face. And now we need his cap. I'm gonna take this cap from Minifigure Series 3 and put it on Scott. Scott's mask covers most of the bottom half of his face, so instead I'm gonna take the bottom half of the head wrap released in the Ninjago movie and it looks great. Oh by the way, movie Zane looks really scary. If you know, you know. Now the more I look at Scott, the more it looks like Lloyd going to a baseball match. So you know what, let's get this Ice Samurai's head instead. Why did I do this? Well, his skin tone is the same as Scott's and as long as you cover his mouth, it doesn't look scary. Just don't look at the other side. It looks like he just saw Zane turn on his funny switch. The reason I never had a sense of humor was because my funny switch wasn't on. And finally, let's give Scott a blaster so he can shoot down some red visors. Alright, Scott is done, so now let's build some other characters in Prime Empire, like Okino. He's this NPC samurai who's really athletic and he has an entire episode dedicated to his backstory. An interesting thing is that Okino's face is the same as Karloff's face. And guess what? I have Karloff. Also, Turner's torso looks a bit like Okino's, so let's combine these two elemental masters together and make Okino. Huh? No, not like that, like this. For his hair, I'm gonna use the same technique in my Daddy No Leg video and give a black fang for his hair. And finally, let's give him a sword. This next character is really minor, but he's still someone I can make, so let's do it. Basically, Okino meets this samurai NPC who's way better than him at leading people, who's called Successful Samurai. 
according to the Ninjago wiki, and his helmet and armor are the same as the Blizzard Samurai from Season 11. So I'm going to take the armor and helmet, get this face from a Ninjago movie general, get this generic blue body, and add some dark blue pants from Fusion J, and with a Kitana, we now have a successful Samurai for Okino to interact with. Someone is obviously missing from this spread, and that's Unagami, the game itself. Now I did think about making him, but he looks really similar to the Skull Sorcerer, which I made in my previous video, so I didn't really want to do something like that again. Instead, let's make Milton Dyer, the one who made Unagami. This is the very first minifigure that I got from this absolutely legendary LEGO City set that actually appears in the LEGO City shorts, and his shirt has the same plaid patterns as Milton Dyer's, so I'm gonna use this, and some dark blue pants here with a belt. Milton Dyer has glasses, so he has a head from an Ultra Agents figure, and we can take Emmett's hair to complete it because it has a little tuft at the back, just like Milton Dyer when he was young. He also has a double-sided, scared expression, like Milton Dyer in the show. So we've got a bunch of characters introduced in Prime Empire itself, but I really want to make a Digi Ninja now. Basically, the ninja in this series are called Digi Ninja, and they have these epic suits with white and their signature color. The closest thing I have in my collection is this racer from Mini Figure Series 3. It kind of looks like that actually. I'll take this and make Kai because of the red and white colors on his suit. For his face, I'll just use a generic one because this blue and black face visor here is nowhere to be found in my collection. Just add a head wrap and we're almost done. For the white armor, I wanted to try and make it out of bricks. I tried many designs including this one using a snot brick and this modified brick with bars extending out so you can clip these one by one plates to look like armor. But it just wasn't working for me so instead I used some sausage pieces to get an angle and it looks much better in my opinion. Finally, we can build the floating health bar using this 1x4 tile from the same Ultra Agent set I got noted. And just one more thing I'd like to make is an energy cube, which is what players turn into when they lose all their lives. This is what I came up with, using translucent 1x2 plates in orange and yellow. And our figures are done. Scott, Akino, Successful Samurai, Milton Dyer, and Digikai. So let's make a little set to display these figures in. Now after looking at the Prime Empire set wave, I realized there was a problem just like most of the other Ninjago waves. Hey! The only thing linking the sets together is the minifigures and collectible Kitanas. Huh? Most of these are vehicles and they would lack unity if you just place them next to each other without the boxes. This wasn't the case in my previous video. Like with the Shintaro set wave, you could clearly tell this was a Shintaro set even without the minifigures because all of the sets came with a build that had a stone suspended in a lava puddle, so it was pretty easy for me to come up with a mock idea. But for Prime Empire, well, I'm just going to have to make a place from the show. I asked on my community page for some ideas and we got some great responses, and in the previous video, someone commented they'd like to see the gamers market. I thought this would be an easy choice, but all of these are so great that I couldn't decide which one to do, so I've instead decided to just do a Prime Empire series later on. I might do it, I might not, but for this video, I'm just going to build Okino's home, Terra Karana, also the first zone in the Prime Empire game. So we see this place in episode 5 of the series called I Am Okino, and I had to watch the episode in slow motion to figure out where things are placed in this area. So Okino runs out of his house at an angle to these wooden pillars, and then runs another distance before jumping over the arcade cabinet, which leads to the gate to the forest of discontent. And later on we see that it is this little distance that Okino runs on that he sticks all of the swords into. So the objective is simple. House, sticks, swords, and arcade cabinet. I'm gonna use this base plate with 32 by 32 studs. First off though, I want to build Okino's house because that's probably going to be the biggest build of this mod. Initially, I tried to build a mini figure scale house, but it looked really ugly and it would take up too much space on the base plate. And I realized that if I wanted to make a full mini figure scale Okino house, I would need three more base plates to accommodate the rest of the build, which I don't have. So instead, I decided to improvise and make a micro scale one. Micro builds are really fun because you just really have to choose what details to represent and every single piece matters. Check out the Cold Earth Driller video I made a while ago, by the way, if you want another micro build. I built Okino's house on two 2x6 plates connected to form a 4x6 stack space. And for the pillars, I used telescope pieces. For the front door, I use this illegal building technique with these grill pieces and it's a good thing that the policeman doesn't have legs anymore so he can't chase us. For the roof curves, I connected two cones using a short stick in opposite directions so that these two slope pieces can be attached in opposite directions. And then I attach it to the roof using two jumper plates and a clip. These dark brown slopes are attached at an angle to give the roof more curves. And finally, to complete the roof, I use these grey modified bricks 
and 2x3 brown plates. I think it turned out much better than the original house, so now we just need to scale everything else down to match the house. Before that though, we need to build a sandy area so that we know how much space each item should take up. And because I didn't have as many sand bricks as I thought I did, I used lots of plates instead. And I had to resort to this darker sand color too at times. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier, but Okino has some bamboo poles next to his house that he chops up. So I used Technic bricks with holes in the studs to put some sticks in. Next, we need the pillars that Okino jumps on and I'm just going to represent them using brown cylinder bricks. And finally, we just need an arcade cabinet. The Empire Temple of Madness set comes with one and I loosely followed the instructions to get this. Even though it looks quite big considering everything else in this build, I can't be bothered scaling it down and it's not too big anyway. So we've got Okino's house, the bamboo poles, the pillars, and the arcade cabinet. Also, we need to add a little rock for Okino to meditate on. And speaking of which, let's make a micro scale Okino too. Now we just need to tile some green around the sand and we should be good to go. Finally, let's just add some trees and these grey bricks to represent the swords that Okino sticks into the ground because I don't have the official Lego dagger pieces. And by the way, I forgot to show you this little play feature I integrated into this diorama. While building, I found this 1x2 brick with a sticker on it and I hid it here in the diorama. It's like a little power up in the Prime Empire game. Like this would give you fish power up or something, I don't know. And finally, we're done. <laughs> In this video, we're gonna build Ninjago Seabound without spending any money, taking only parts from my existing collection. It's set underwater and there's a lot of different things we can build, so this will be fun. Let the challenge begin. First off, let's build some of the scuba ninja. Because they go underwater, they have oxygen tanks. I have these two LEGO City firefighters with oxygen tanks on their back, so I'll use them. I can also take this blue oxygen tank from Benny from the LEGO movie and the armor piece from this Ninjago movie general that comes with an oxygen tank. We got four oxygen tanks, which is perfect because four ninja go underwater, Nia, Jay, Zane, and Lloyd. Now let's start with Lloyd. I'm gonna take this Nexo Knight guy's pants and helmet and then get Kanan's torso piece. It looks a bit like the core suit, but I think it works for a scuba suit too. Then I'll replace the metal thing on the helmet with a motorcycle helmet, face visor, and give Lloyd a yellow oxygen tank. Also, here are two pillow mints. Pillow mint? Ah, the most refreshing mint of them all. This pillow mint is round and this pillow mint is square, but let's just give Lloyd both to make Lloyd happy. Next, let's make Zayn. I'll use a Stormtrooper suit and the Ninjago movie armor piece add movie Zane's face because I don't have a silver one and give him a white motorcycle helmet. For Jay, I'll just take his hands of time suit which is apparently the fusion armor and it covers most of his torso so let's roll with it. Give him the blue oxygen tank because Jay is blue and give him the black helmet because I don't have a blue one. I tried Benny's helmet but it looks weird. Finally, we need to make Nia. I have these two figures from Nexonites and Galaxy Squad with light blue as a designs that could both work. For the torso, I'll take the Galaxy Squad 1 because the other has lots of orange and just looks too armored. And for the legs, I'll take the Nexonite's legs. Give her some oxygen tanks and the blue helmet from the Galaxy Squad guy. And also let's give her some spinjitsu so that she can turn into water and make Jay sad. Our four scuba ninja are done and let's just give them some accessories. Here's a grappling hook because Nia saves Dareth with a grappling hook in the show. And here's the actual blaster piece that Lego used in the sets. But I only have one of them from the Lego movie, so let's give it to Zayn because we don't want to make movie Zayn unhappy, do we? For Lloyd and Jade, they appear in the same shot, both using blasters here, so I want to give them the same designs. Now our scuba ninja are complete, and just for fun, here's Kai and Cole with some custom season 11 weapons I made. Now we have to make Kama the main villain of this season who has five legs. He's very strange and that's bad, because it looks like I'm going to have to build my own purple legs then. I found this strange Lego piece with a 1x2 base and 3 bars at angles. If you get 3 1x2 purple plates and add 1x1 clips, you can attach them to look like his legs. I also have this 1x2 tile with a bar on both sides so we can add Kama's last 2 legs. Now we can add these slopes to complete it. For his body, I'm gonna take this anaconda torso because it's purple, then slap on some gold Shima armor. And I have a really great idea for his face. Remember the Ninjago movie general we took the armor from earlier? His headpiece is purple, like Kalma's head, and it has eyes, like Kalma, and a mouth, 
like Kalma. And Kalma is done. Let's just give him a golden trident to complete it. Alright, that was fun and I think it's time to build a custom set to showcase all our new minifigures. I want to make the Temple of Wojira but it's known as the Temple of the Endless Sea in the sets. Anyway, there are lots of inaccurate things about this so I want to improve it and make my own version. Let's go. Alright, so first I want to build the big gate at the front, then this little walking distance and the pool of jellyfish that charges Wojira. So I started with the layout and then I started piling up rocks with lots of slopes everywhere. For the long section, I tried to be super detailed with the rock designs and I decided to add some plants inside the rocks just for fun. The slopes and details were nice and so I began covering up the areas on top. Then I moved on to build the structure of the big archway and then began the two giant Kalra statues at the entrance of the temple. It was really really challenging and I had to use some clever building techniques for the face and legs because there are lots of angles on this thing. And that really made me tired so I decided to take a break to make a micro scale version of Lloyd's Hydro Mech just for fun. That was done and it looked pretty good so I began work on the pool. There was some more rock detailing required but for the water itself I used these blue window panes and a sideways building technique. There's also a connection point here with a Technic pin to connect to the previous build. I finished up the walls of the pool and added some transitioning around it, but I was tired so I called it a day. It's day 2 and I'm ready to keep building, and actually I forgot to show this yesterday, but if you lift up the stairs at the front, there's a jade blade underneath because we love jade blades. The pool was looking bland so I added chi pieces with two stud stacks on top all around, and then I made a weapon rack with this 1x4 tile and 1x1 bricks with clips actually discovered that you can fit bars in between the clips, so that's, that's interesting. Then I made one of those water interface computers with this little 1x1 one one tile with double-sided stud connections to sandwich a window pane on its side to represent the water interface. I also made a worn down front gate with brown bar pieces. It was looking pretty good but I really wanted to improve the front of the build because it looks so plain, so I took out a ton of black slopes and began building. Then I got some blue pieces to represent the glowing blue things at the front of the temple. And I'm really happy with how it looks, it greatly improved the build. Then I added some black bricks to the sides to make the temple look less monotonous. It's day 3 and I plan to finish this mock so I got started on the final section of the build, Wojira. I built a pillar of sorts and then made Wojira's head with these angled pieces. There are two round plates on Wojira's head for the amulets and I replaced one with a blue plate to represent the wave amulet. The weird blue things on Wojira's heads are represented by these water pieces and I used golden fangs for the horns. I attached it to the main build with a bendy stick I got from a Technic set. Like in the show, Wojira can draw energy from the pool and it was great. I also made a random side build with some plants and then did some transitioning between the sand and the water. Added some plants to the front of the build and it was finally done. There are two extra features I want to show you. Up here there's like a platform you can stand on if you lift these up, there's some secret storage space. Here's a lamp. And also these three sections can be taken apart and interchanged. You can flip the pool section around or remove it entirely if you want to. I think it's a pretty cool feature. And that's it. Ninjago Crystallized brought back a lot of things from previous seasons of Ninjago. Old characters, old relics and old locations. Like the Oni Temple from 7 seasons ago. So in this video I'm going to be making a ton of custom minifigures and recreating scenes from the Crystal Temple before trying to combine it all into one giant mock. But the catch is I can't spend any money on new parts. Do I have what it takes or will this end in disaster? Let's find out. Ninjago Crystallized was meant to be the grand finale of Ninjago since 2011 so they intended to bring back as many ninja allies and villains as possible. So in this video wow. we're going to try and build as many custom figures as we can. In Crystallize, the Overlord sends Harumi to recruit villains to form the Council of the Crystal King. So let's make Harumi first. No, no, no. I have this lady from Ninja Turtles with some purple on her torso, so I'll use that. And for the face, I've got this evil looking one from a generic minifigure. For her hair, I'll take this brown one because the shaping is similar to the original, even though the color is different. Just give her a sword and we're done. I still don't understand how her sword is immune to only power. Now I have no idea where he came from but Mr. E from Season 8 was rebuilt after being destroyed in Season 9. Mr. E? Mr. F. He's the new model. Unfortunately, he still doesn't talk. I made Mr. E in the very first video on my channel actually so we can bring him back but just change his outfit to be more black. And let's give him a crystal blaster too. This next guy I want to make technically isn't a villain but he held a place on the council for a short time and that's Lloyd. 
I mean, he disguised himself as the mechanic, and I want to make Lloyd in this suit. So I took Legacy Kai's torso and some grey pants. I got a moustache from a Lego movie robot sheriff, Lloyd's face and a bowler hat from an Aldrich Agents villain, and the figure is done. For the robot arm, I got a 1x1 one one brick and just put it on Lloyd's hand and attached a cone. Comment down below if this is illegal, I have no clue. And yes, this is the figure on the trailer thumbnail. I've been planning this since the beginning. So we've got our villain figures done, and now it's time to recreate the meeting room where the Crystal Council first meets. In the clip, they sit around a six-sided table, so I angled the pieces with one-by-one -one studs. In the middle, there's a pedestal for the crystal spot, and these little pink wedges represent the crystals around it. Also, just for some detail, I've added the archway in the background. I made a mini version of every member of the council including Pythor, Harumi, Vangelis and Asphira. For Vangelis, his mask is just a modified 1x1 one one plate and Asphira's body is a double sided snot brick. Now we just need to make the Overlord himself also known as the Crystal King in this season. He has 4 arms and the only upper torso piece I have is from General Kozu but it's red. So let's just go with this red colour scheme and I'll take Kai FS because he has gold arms and just switch out the legs with Kozu's. This villain from Nexo Knights has a scary red face and then I added Kozu's red helmet and attached a glizzy slash sausage piece to the helmet and then attached some horns. From the back it really looks like the Crystal King and I'm very happy with this. Big brain moves right there. So we've got all our villains and now it's time to make some of the good guys. Ronin and Skylor both return and since I made them in previous videos I'll just take them from there too. I can also bring back the Prime Empire figures from an earlier video Scott, Okino, and Milton died. This brings back so many good memories. We've got the allies, but we don't have the ninja themselves, so let's do this the TD Bricks way. Cue the music. We have the 5 ninja and Samurai X. I used any minifigures I could for the ninja to make this unified team and gave them their custom weapons. And for Samurai X, I used Nia's Hands of Time suit and some generic samurai pieces. Now the first part of the season is about tracking down a Vengestone buyer and it's actually Harumi who has been making a Vengestone army. So let's make the giant room that contains the Vengestone army. I used one by one bricks and cones, yellow studs and black wedge pieces. Looks pretty menacing to me. In Ninjago Crystallized, Gambadan teaches Lloyd how to activate only form and grow two arms. I really want to make them but I already used my double torso for the overlord. And give in to your rage, then channel it through your face so for gamadan i'll take two generic black bodies and get a translucent one by two brick because it doesn't have a support pillar inside like a regular brick i'll add some wings a face and some oni horns using the same glizzy trick for the helmet i'll do the exact same for lord but because the green brick looks weird i'll cover it with a bracket and next to my shield for the head i'll use the glizzy trick again but attach it to lloyd's head using a one by one golden clip they look pretty ugly but i've got no other options Finally, all our figures are done. And my desk is really messy. This is probably the biggest group of minifigures I've ever done for a video. Lloyd is pretty mad at Harumi though, so let's make this scene where Lloyd unleashes Oni power for the first time. There's a lava pool, some raised platforms, and a jail cell for Lloyd. I made a micro Harumi and a micro Lloyd too that can fit in the jail cell. So we finished our three micro builds, and now it's time to combine our three crystal temple scenes into one giant mock. I wanted to make like a structure to stack everything, so I made a base, then some pillars, and then secured it with Technic Beams. I repeated this for each level, base, pillars, Technic Beams, base, pillars, Technic Beams. I was able to hang Lloyd's jail cell from the top and this thing is just really satisfying to look at. Then I wanted to start making the exterior, but then that's when things really started getting messy. I made the giant Oni mask at the front, but it went terribly, it didn't look that great. I tried again and it was a slight improvement but still not accurate at all. I got so fed up that I started the base of the temple and then I suddenly realized I wouldn't have enough parts to finish it. So now it's time to start over. We're gonna start with the base because every build needs a good foundation. I'm gonna connect these four Technic beams with some angular bricks and then I'll attach some plates to the side using some snot bricks. and then stagger tons of small dark and light grey bricks upwards to make these stilt walls of the temple. 
So we're off to a good start and one thing I'm really proud of is attaching this grey slope piece at the halfway point underneath and then staggering the upper stud with the jumper plate to make it look slightly more recessed into the wall than the other bricks. Wow! Okay, but now it's time to build the part of the temple that gave me the most nightmares in the previous video, the face. See, what was so hard last time was getting it to look three-dimensional because I was building it way too flat. So this time I'm going to start with the eyes using these curvy pieces sandwiched together by these small double-sided plates. And I'll add this pink jumper plate with a stud slightly recessed in the eye. Next, to sort of angle the eyes downwards, I'll make use of the angle on this handlebar piece. Now I'll get these big grey pieces for the forehead and then I'll use this strange piece for the nose and use some grey hinge pieces to make a curved mouth shape. Okay, so the face already looks like a major improvement from the previous draft. Wait, who's that? Kai, why are you wearing the green ninja suit? You're not supposed to do that. Anyway, I still think the eyes are too high above the nose but we can fix that later after we figure out how to incorporate this thing into the main temple build. Right, so we've incorporated the face into the main build and I lowered the eyes. It's coming together really nicely so now we just need to cover up all this ugly empty space around the face. It looks really cool from underneath, like a Minecraft cave. The rock detailing is really nice and we can also add a roof with some small pieces to continue that texture, as well as the giant crystal found at the top of the temple with some golden circle pieces. We're pretty much done with the top half of the temple, but before we move on to the base there's something we need to do and that requires a lot of red bricks. Now I haven't shown this on the channel before but I keep all my Lego boxes in this big box here and while I was trying to get the red box out it just exploded. So I'm gonna need a while to clean this up and get the pieces I need. Now it's time for the fun part. Oh I also found this bag of broken brown pieces. But enough messing around because we're going to use these red bricks to reinforce the inside of the temple because it's really weak at the moment and that's bad. These red bricks will help with strengthen it. Oh and I also found this little red present brick. Looks pretty nice. It feels a lot stronger now but now onto these large plates I attached at the side of the build which you've probably noticed for a while. These go in quite nicely and while they're actually for finishing off the base which is much larger than the top of the temple. So we can just flick all of them off and begin to make three tiles with each side. Now it's time to attach our three side plates to the main build. It actually looks really good right now, but it's time to move on to the base of the temple. It's this really jagged pointy thing, so I'm going to take a wheel off Cole's Earth Driller and use this. Hey, what's up Cole? I'll also get the pillar from this Forbidden Swinjutsu set and take the base. And I'll add this cone in another cone, and then this little silver driller piece. <coughs> Next we need some bigger pieces to sort of transition the top of the temple to the current assembly we have. So I'll take these pieces from the Garmatron and then make this thick curved plate. Now we just need to attach this upside down to the bottom of the temple. I've got this bar which will extend across the underside of the crystal temple. I need this to have double side stud connections, so I'm gonna take this bracket, get this long plate, hold it there, add this two by two tie. Now it fits exactly. You see, I can do this. And that should hold the plates. Yes, it does work, so my math was right. So, now I'll just do that for the other side. I'll add that, add the two by two, you can see now we've pretty much got double, a double-sided plate. Uh, we just need to kind of secure, secure it here because this has nothing connecting it. And then we can use this double-sided plate for attaching the base. Hopefully this fits. It's really hard getting the right angle. Oh, I got it. I got it. It fits. It actually fits. And I guess the overall shape is complete. Only problem is to stand it upright on my table, I have to take off the pointy thing. And that really stresses the bottom. So I'm going to take some Technic beams and make a little display stand that we can suspend the temple from. I'm much more confident about the stability of the build now. It's also really heavy. But we're still not done yet and there are a few more things we need to do.
this probably wasn't such a good idea. There's Lego wall over the floor now. Basically, we need to add some green to the build because the temple actually rises out of the ground after a few thousand years, so lots of vegetation has grown on it. So now we also need to add some crystal shards around the walls, so I'll use these pink bricks. It's time for the last one. Also, I don't know why I did this, but I just decided I wanted to... But I just thought of putting some flowers back here, I don't know why. It looks so colorful right now. Wrong. Finally, here's a microscale Lloyd in his golden suit, and here's a small evil mech design I came up with that can fit the Lloyd we just made. Here's Garmadon in the same scale with a clip for his horns. You're hurt. <laughs> I, I, I can't. It's okay. Don't try to talk. Sorry, Lloyd. Hold on. You'll be okay. I'll get you out of here. Save. <laughs> Save yourself. It's too late for me. <laughs> oh, and my friend Ross asked me to make a penguin, so I guess here's one. At this point, I was really running out of pieces, so I got what I could to make a crystal king. Doesn't look very good, but it's the best I could do with the pieces left. And I guess that finishes it. That was definitely a challenge, and I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the last episode of Build Ninja Season 2, but don't worry because I'm planning Season 3. They're gonna be four episodes, you can find them in the description, but they won't come out so soon because I need to do some planning, but in the meantime, I've got some really juicy content coming your way. In the next video, we'll be building scraps, Ninjago concepts, and Lego, so see you then, and subscribe so you don't miss it. See you next time, stay creative, and keep on building.